Hi, I'm currently working on my own roguelike game focused on bow and arrow combat. In this devlog I will show you the progress I've made since last time. So let's get right into it. Here is what the game looks like right now. There's a player, few enemies and some walls. But as a lot of you pointed out, these walls are really hard to see, especially when you are watching this in a bright environment. And that can be a huge problem for the player, because every important object should be clearly visible to anyone. But that's just not the case with these walls. I think it's quite obvious what I should do here. I redesigned the walls and the background. And while already working on the environment, I also quickly sketched out a new level layout with these walls. Also, to make it more interesting and beautiful, I added some bushes here and there. I'm not that sure if they fit the art style of the game very well, but let me know what you think. So now the environment looks neat, but there are still these boring white rectangles. They are the obelisks the player has to activate to proceed through the level and spawn the boss. I tried out a lot of different designs for these obelisks and ended up on this. It's surely not that detailed, but I think it still looks quite interesting and will draw the player's attention to it. When killing all enemies and therefore completing it, there's a smooth and satisfying animation. On top of that, it drops some power shards which refill the player's power bar. This wasn't what I originally planned, but I think it's a nice and simple reward for completing it. Also, it's quite easy to tell when it has already been activated, because it turns blue. Something which was really bothering me a lot was the camera shake when, for example, hitting an enemy. I felt like it was barely noticeable at all and didn't look so nice. I chose the easy way for implementing screen shake by just using the built-in Cinemachine input system. It's not bad in any way, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to have more control over the whole system and I wanted it to work with physics. Let me explain what I mean by that. When for example shooting an arrow, there's a specific force with which the arrow gets shot by the bow and pushes the player back. Instead of the camera simply shaking randomly in some direction with a specific strength, it would be cool if the camera had the same force applied to it. So in this case, it should also move back with the player even more to make it feel more powerful and strong. And to make it more physics-y, there should be a weaker counterforce applied to it. This all results in a smooth and still powerful camera shake. At least in theory. So let's implement that. And yeah, there's definitely something wrong here. It seems I forgot to apply the counterforce and so the camera slowly moves away from the player. Yeah, that actually was the issue. I'm unsure if the camera shake is a bit too strong, but for me it feels quite balanced. Let me know what your opinion on that is. This game should be a roguelike game. At least that's my plan. But what even is roguelike? Let's see what Wikipedia has to say. Roguelike is a subgenre of role-playing video games characterized by a dungeon crawl through procedurally generated levels. Yeah, I think that would be quite important. Random level generation is not necessary for a roguelike game, like for example Risk Rain 2. This game just uses hand-designed levels with some random elements on top of that. And in the current time, roguelike isn't clearly defined anymore. Roguelike games are also characterized by quote, turn-based gameplay and grid-based movement, which most of new roguelike games don't have. In my opinion, random levels are still quite important to keep the gameplay fresh and exciting. But by hand designing levels, you also have the advantage that you can design it way better than an algorithm ever can. But you would need to design a big selection of different levels to still keep it interesting. I would be very interested in what you think about that. At least one thing is clear. I will need some sort of random elements in the game anyway. And before creating completely procedural levels, I first wanted to make the obelisk spawn randomly on the map. Let's see how long this will take. Oh, actually it's already working. At least somewhat. 
The position is indeed random every time you start the game, but the amount of obelisks is also random, which I don't want. And for some completely strange reason, activating an obelisk will sometimes spawn the boss. That's weird. And somehow I've now broken it completely. I mean, that's definitely interesting, but not what I wanted. Finally, it looks like it's working. There are exactly three obelisks spawned over the whole map and you can't randomly summon the boss anymore. This is much more like the original concept I had in mind. While playing the game, I noticed that it's pretty frustrating when you run out of power and can't use your dash anymore. To get this power back, you need to collect these power shards dropped by enemies when dying. I still think this is a an unique and interesting concept but it also, in my opinion, slows down the gameplay and is a bit annoying sometimes. To counteract this just a little bit, I made the power regenerate passively with a small delay after using your power. This isn't a huge game breaking change or anything, but it definitely makes using the dash much less frustrating. Next up, I wanted to add upgrades which make the player stronger. Upgrades are also quite essential in most roguelike games because they make runs even more unique and are simply fun. So I made a basic upgrade system, which would allow me to add all sorts of powers, effects or stat increases. To test this out, I made a simple health upgrade. When interacting and collecting it, your maximum health increases. It's not complicated or that interesting, but with this I can test out the whole upgrade system. For example, all upgrades can be leveled up. When changing the level from 0 to 4, it increases your health even more. And on top of that, these upgrades are also completely stackable, as you can see right here. Also, it gets quite ridiculous when setting the level to something like 50. But this also proves that everything works correctly. So that's nice. Now it's time to make more upgrades. For now, I just added two more upgrades, which are still very basic. The yellow one increases your movement speed, which is helpful, I guess. And the other one increases your maximum power. This will especially be nice when I later add more powerful abilities, consuming much more power than the normal dash ability. I also need a cool name for these upgrades. I don't want to just call them upgrades or items or something like that. Something I came up with was artifacts or relics, but I would love to hear your suggestions for an interesting name in the comments. And any upgrade ideas you come up with are is usually very appreciated too. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and liking. I wish you a great day and see you soon.